Hey everyone, welcome along to the channel today and if you are new here, welcome along. Uh, nothing will seem strange or out of the ordinary, but if you've been with me for a while you'll be thinking, what is he doing with a lensed camera? So for the last 17 months I have devoted my photography to pinhole photography and I had every intention of continuing that today. However, during the week, I dug this thing out. Which is my Mamiya RB67. I've had this for quite a few years and it's spent a lot of time living under my bed. And I had every intention of selling it. I've dug it out, decided I can't sell it. So I thought I'd better use it. Um, so today I had planned on doing a video with anamorphic pinhole photography. Unfortunately during the week I was going to get a collection of images which I hadn't managed to do because of work and life. So for what? not? Let's come out of the RB. And uh, I've um, for some reason picked a long walk um, and it weighs a ton. I'll go cross away in a bit but I'm going to get this quick shot and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So the plan of coming out with my RB was a bit of a last minute thing, like I said I dug it out, cleaned it up, decided I couldn't sell it, didn't have the photos ready for what I wanted, I think I've got to go that way, I don't know, um, with the anamorphic pinhole camera, uh, so I decided to bring this out, uh, I'd planned on parking on the top of the downs at a Pacific spot where I knew I could get a certain photos on a certain little trail uh, but unfortunately I couldn't gain access to that from two different points so I've had to basically come somewhere I've never been before um, I found a quick route on all trails I think it was and it's about a five mile round little trip the problem with that is with a pinhole camera it's not going to be so bad my pin average pinhole camera kit set up with my little carbon tripod let's say four by five is maybe about four pound in weight this thing with my heavier duty tripod and the geared head comes in about 13 pound um using this thing is suffering for your art but from what i remember the images are fantastic out of it i've got three lenses with me uh, one back with um foam pound 100 in which i'll be shooting at 400 and uh yeah, we'll go through it a little bit as we go along and uh, hopefully I don't die or break my back along the way. Okay, so I feel I've spent far too long trying to get this shot set up. The problem with um, having a few lens options is you kind of dance around a bit more and oh, I can try this, I can try that. Well, I've just been used to so long just having, right, that's the focal length I've got my pin on camera. I'll work with that. but. I've kind of set this up, got this tree here, fence line going through, hopefully the sun stays out for this and um, I kind of wanted to get some movement in that tree so I've put a 10 stop filter on it to get about a 30 second exposure, uh, 5 second metered with the 10 stop uh, reciprocity failure bumping up to 30 seconds so uh, being pinhole photography you get so used to the long exposures that that's what I like.
kind of feel if I devoted the last 17 months to this camera I'd either be pretty buff or dead it's, um, and you don't need a gym membership when you've got this thing this is a beast I mean clearly I don't have a gym membership anyway but if you do get yourself one of these I can walk out over the downs or even on a flat surface is bad enough Now while I'm having a quick, quick rest, a um, couple of things about this camera. So it is an RB67. The RB stands for rotating back. So in there is your film. And it is a six by seven format or the negative you get will be six by seven. So that way is landscape, that way you get a portrait. Now if yours works correctly, another thing will happen in the viewfinder, is these red strips. As you switch it to portrait, they will vanish um, because the red strips mark the horizontal, the um, landscape lines, twist it over they pop out and the new user lines going down the side mine are jammed unfortunately but um i've kind of wedged them open so i know what i'm doing but they don't get in the way if they don't work but um fantastic fantastic i mean if you put this thing on this side it'd be so heavy on the side it'd probably roll over anyway but now over the years a lot of people have asked about the mirror lockup feature on this or why uh, in previous videos a long time ago I'd push a button here and then with a cable release fire here. Now you can get dual uh, cable releases for these cameras and basically the idea is is this will flip the mirror out of the way. These are big flappy mirrors so that can add a little bit of wobble. Not a lot but it can add wobble to the camera. So once that's flapped out of the way you then pull this knobble out here and that will then control the shutter system inside the lens. If that is um, closed, that button down here will fire the whole lot as normal. You fire it and it uh, flips the mirror, it fires the shutter. So by doing that, it just reduces in-camera vibrations and um, get a slightly sharper image, maybe. So for this shot, I am just trying something simple, just getting these trees down here and mostly concentrating on the sky. I've put a polarizer on it, just to hopefully darken them blues a little bit. It doesn't do a lot of polarizer, but it might help a little bit. We've got a F16, a 60th of a second for that. So that would have flipped the mirror out of the way, and then that fires a shutter. That advances the film back on. Have a couple of photos. Um, light was changing fast. Wind is pretty immense up here. Got 
got some big old rain clouds just just skimming us. Um, anyway, I'm cutting my walk shorter. I found a shortcut basically, and uh, I'm taking it because this is taking a lot longer than what I thought. Uh, setting up the shots and stuff, and so I'm hoping this path leads me to where. I am, and hopefully we'll still find some nice uh, pictures along the way. So, just trying to grab what I can at the minute. Um, but yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Check point. Quick one with the fence line. Vanishing up into the distance. Now I've got 60th of a second at F. 22. I'm just firing away now. Turbines down there on their home, so I'll head to them and I'll find the car later on. But certainly a beautiful view up here. Um, painful. Nice to think differently with your photography anyway. I'm so used to with a pinhole camera to thinking about what's more up close and not what's kind of, you know, if I did a shot like that with a pinhole camera, everything out there would kind of be so out of focus it wouldn't really make much difference. But with this, I know I could shoot it um, at a shallower depth of field and blur that out, but it's quite nice to uh, think differently. It's easy to kind of get stuck in a set way of thinking and a set routine so as much as it has been nice to be out of this it is killing me a little bit I'm gonna lie I'll keep it more for the uh, shorter walk days and um, easier easier routes this is a bit of a killer I'm not gonna lie but it would be certainly a lovely, uh, some lovely pinhole photo opportunities up here. So I'll be doing this again with my pinhole camera. But I think my uh, shortcut's paying off actually. I think, I think I just gotta go down there. I recognize the field. So we'll see. I've still got a couple more photos. I think I'm on, eight, and this takes 10, eight, nine, 10, three more. So, so I can get before I get back to the car before this rain cloud hits me and uh, hopefully it would have been worth it. This is certainly not a well-used path. 
Um, oh, I've almost slipped over several times with this thing. I know where I am now. Head back. So I came across this tree earlier actually, because uh, this is where I came. I thought that is quite a nice tree. So I'm going to try a quick photo. Unfortunately, I've got no light on it. So that's not the best. We do have a bit of maybe in the morning. I have to come up in the morning when the sun's over there. We'll quite a, try a quick shot. We've got Go F8 with uh, one fourth of a second. So I'm hoping with the uh, close focus to stuff, um, basically the wider aperture of the shallower depth of the field, it's going to be okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wear glasses, so they would be perfect for a time like that. With their pinhole camera, I obviously don't need them because I don't have a viewfinder. You can kind of just visually see what you're getting in your image. But when you're trying to concentrate on them fine, fine uh, focus details, uh, they probably help a lot. So I'll uh, have to remember them next time. Anyway, I'm. Um, out of weather warning on my phone, apparently another big batch of rains due to come in a minute but we've got a bit of sunshine, hopefully before that hits. So I've got one more photo, the car's not too far away so I'm going to see if I can find one more and that'll be it, we'll wrap this up and we'll see how we got on. So for my last photo, I'm just trying this one quickly, of this hut in the woods and it just suddenly come over really grey. Um, F8, about fourth of a second, no, about a second at F8, um, I can't actually see this, or whether it's in focus or not, it kind of looks out of focus, but that might be my eyes, anyway, I'm going to try it, finish this up. So what's it been like to go back out after 17 months of just pinhole photography with one of the heaviest <laughs> film cameras you can possibly buy? Uh, they might be heavier, that's not a fact, it might not be the heaviest. Um, firstly, it has been an absolute pain in the neck. My uh, back and shoulders are killing me. I think next time I'll stick to something a little bit shorter and more manageable. Um, but it's been enjoyable. It's it breaks up your way of thinking a little bit, um, it steps back out of your what becomes your comfort zone back into something else, so it's good. It's a good process. I think if I was to sell it I would probably look at uh, more of a large format camera which would probably actually be lighter, something like an Intrepid. Um, would probably be a lot lighter than this thing and uh, they're only made just over there, hill actually, over in Brighton. Um, so that's something I'd certainly consider, but it's been fun, it's been enjoyable. But I'll be out back out with my pinhole cameras next week, definitely get back on that again. Um, but I've loved the process and I really hope you've enjoyed the video and the photos more importantly. And if you have, make sure you subscribe and click the little bell and join me next time and I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching everyone. 
Take care.